Everybody, Dr. Susan here. Um, I just wanted to follow up on the talk that we did last week. Um, it was an online talk. A lot of people attended and it was wonderful. Um, and a lot of people move forward with blood work and I'm so excited to analyze their blood work and tell them what I see in their bodies. So we've had a lot of uh, a lot of information come through on those uh, blood reports last week. So what I'm going to do uh, probably next week is I'm, I created some case studies. So as I'm analyzing blood work from the past talk, I'm actually creating case studies to show people what the functional blood chemistry analysis can show them. I know a lot of people don't understand how the analysis benefits them, um, but it has such an amazing benefit. I wouldn't trade for anything in the world. It's how I restored my health. So I'm trying to share that with people to see when you get a 3D look at your blood and trace patterns and look at optimal levels, everything changes and you can just learn so much from blood. The answers are in our blood. Um, it's not a protocol, it's not an opinion. So it's very, it's information that comes out of your body and tells me what's going on. So it's really a priceless, priceless um, tool that we have. So anyway, in the talk last week, we talked about a few concepts that I, I felt like Molly needed more time um, and we didn't have the time. And I, I went over on time as it was. So anybody who knows me or has listened to me speak in the past, I usually do go over. I'm a talker. Um, I have so much information in me about health, relating to health, that once I start going, it's hard for me to stop. So I did go over a little bit overboard on time. But um, I appreciate everybody staying on, and I know you were taking notes. I was watching. That's awesome. So I hope everybody took something from that talk. I'm going to mention quick, our next talk is February 18th, I believe. It's a Thursday. It's either the 17th or the 18th. Um, um, in February, about autoimmune and thyroid. It's my favorite talk. It's really my wheelhouse. Um, so... I'm excited, excited to share the information that I have with you on that. So um, please look in future. We will have links and things like that um, to share with you so you can get the links sent to you for the talk. Um, and I look forward to seeing everybody there. But I want to talk today about blood sugar. So Jessica was nice enough to write these for me because anyone who knows me knows my handwriting is terrible. So um, she so neatly wrote these out for me. Um, and I want to share about blood sugar. The next uh, video I think will be tomorrow. I'm talking about diet variation, which is a big, big topic. I barely touched on in the talk. It's the one thing that I think most people end up reaching out to me for extra help because it's it just changes in everybody and it's not a concept easily understood by people. So I'm, I'm going to talk about that in a video tomorrow. Today's about blood sugar. Um, so I just want to start by saying what has changed with blood sugar? Well, blood sugar always um, in history, the function, the, not functional, but the medical range, blood sugar needs to be under 100. That's what medical doctors used to feel. Blood sugar had to be under 100 uh, milligrams per deciliter. Um, but in recent years, I've seen it be up at levels of 150, and it's acceptable by the medical world. And usually their answer is, come back in six months. That's what people tell me. So when I see people's uh, blood sugar, when I do their blood work, up at high levels like that 140 150 I always say to them what did the doctor say to you and they tell me usually come back in six months the reason why they're telling you to come back in six months is because they're waiting for you to be where they would diagnose you with diabetes where they can give you a drug give you insulin put you on metformin is another one they put a lot of people on and funny enough, I've worked with a lot of people who are put on metformin for weight loss. So the medical world understands that if you, if you regulate blood sugar, you can lose weight. The problem with metformin or any other weight loss drug is once you start altering your metabolism by a chemical that our body does not recognize, you have, you're in danger of permanently damaging your metabolism. So I've had people who have done everything right but they could not lose weight. And it's because they permanently damaged their metabolism. And it's unfortunate. It's kind of what I call medical wreckage. It's just that the drugs that they were given to try to keep making them happy and make the, the medical doctor happy, just being able to give them something, 
Um, it damaged their body so much that they couldn't function in normal physiology any longer. So um, I always try to want to prevent that from happening. Most people don't understand that. The medical world is amazing. They're amazing, amazing. I can't say enough about them. In acute situations, they're absolutely brilliant. I cannot do what they do. But when it comes to chronic illness and restoring health in the body, restoring health, it's not their model. So it's not the place to go. If you're looking to restore health um, and, and not be put on medication and correct your body in optimal levels naturally, then the medical world is not the place for you. And medical, medical professionals understand that because I have many medical professional patients who understand that that's not the place, it's not the place to go for chronic issues, um, autoimmune issues, um, weight issues. It's the medical doctor's office is not the place for you. So I'm going to talk to you today about blood sugar. Um, again, uh, under hundred uh, milligrams per deciliter used to be the mark. Um, so that's the first thing I encourage you to do is to Find out where your blood sugar is. Most people don't know. They don't, they don't check it. Why would they? Unless you're diabetic, they wouldn't check their blood sugar. I check my blood sugar every day. So every day, so I'll just show you. It's simple. It's a simple, simple tool. So I brought with me, this is one of them. This is, this is a new one. I didn't, I have this one. As you can see, I haven't even opened it. I don't use this one. It's not, I don't have anything against it. It's freestyle. Um, you can get in any supermarket like Kroger or Publix, Walmart um, sells them. I don't even know how much it is. It's under $20. Um, the one that I love, and I, oops, sorry, I just dropped it. I've used this one so much that everything's broken, the zipper, everything. This is, um, hold on, let me, it's the Keto Mojo. So this is the one I used. Um, I used this one for three years. I measured my blood glucose and ketones many times per day. Um, the, the beauty of this one, it comes with, uh, glucose strips, but also ketone strips. So I know measuring ketones is a little bit advanced. That's not what I'm gonna talk about today. Uh, it's incredible. And I'll do another video on that, but today it's blood sugar. So it comes with blood sugar strips like this, the whole pack of them. I don't know how many are in here. Not too many left, but you know, it comes usually this is full. And again, it's not, none of this is expensive to get. But I recommend that you check your blood sugar daily when you wake up first thing in the morning. So it's a fasting sample. So you fast through the night naturally, right? So people like to realize that they're fasting already because when you go to sleep and you don't eat through the night, you're fasting 10 hours. That's why it's called breakfast, break fast. That's where it comes from. So fasting is something that was a healing modality a hundred years ago. I mean, that's what people did and used to heal and people went to clinics to heal extended fasting to heal their bodies um, and again I won't get into that either but I want to talk about blood sugar sorry see I can go off on tangents when I talk about topics um, so you want to make sure that your blood sugar is under 99 first thing in the morning um, that's for sure um, in the past if your blood sugar was over 100 it was considered pre-diabetic so if you had blood sugar of say 110 it used to be considered pre-diabetic and the medical doctor would talk to you about that blood sugar being too high um, if it went higher than 120 125 it was considered in the past not today diabetic diabetic levels so you want to be sure that this isn't happening in your body that you have a blood sugar that's higher than 100 because that will hinder your weight loss completely um, so you want to be sure of that. Um, so I've had patients before I checked blood years ago. Um, I've actually always checked blood, but when I did weight loss, I didn't think it was necessary to check blood work. Um, so there was a time when I did more weight loss and didn't check blood work. And I had people who did lose weight, but not, not as much as I had promised or hoped for how much they wanted. Um, so then I would check blood and their blood sugar, you know, was 117, 120. And I'm like, no wonder you're not losing weight. So having your blood sugar regulated is so important for your metabolism um, and that's a thing again i always talk about calorie counting programs or points and things like that when you're just counting calories and points and not taking all this metabolic function into consideration you'll lose weight temporarily but you're going to gain it back most likely so it's just it's it's, it's not so much about eat less move more anymore it used to be years ago back probably prior to 1990. In 1990 is when they started 
removing fat from food. Everything was fat free. So anybody who was born or lived during that time as I did, everything was fat free at that time. So if you ate a fat free pound cake with a half a gallon of fat free ice cream, or many will remember snack well cookies, they're fat free. You can eat as many as you want. The problem with that is they were loaded with sugar. So that has brought our country into a new level of disease, all the sugar that we have consumed. And sugar's in everything. So anybody who has heard me speak, I talk about it all the time. You have to read the labels. You have to read the words, not the numbers. You have to read the labels. Um, and you have to be sure that sugar is not in what you're eating. Um, it's also hidden in many ways. They, they, they are smart. Marketers um, and food companies are smart that we don't want to eat sugar any longer. We know that we've been given too much sugar. So they hide it. They hide it in words like natural flavorings. Um, or it used to be dextrose, that was easy to find, but now they make, it's like code word for sugar. Um, so I just, I always say if something tastes too good, they have sugar somewhere in it. So I just say read the ingredients really carefully, um, and be sure that you're not getting sugar in, because I have people who drink diet drinks or drinks that there's nothing in it, zero everything, and it's no problem, but it's raising their blood sugar levels. So... If this is such a massive topic, like I already think I spoke for 20, 10 minutes and I barely even touched on it. It's so, it's so important and so big. So let me get back. Um, check your blood glucose. You can get this in any grocery store. It doesn't have to be a Keto Mojo. This is the model I use. Um, it could be the Freestyle that I showed you or any, any, I mean, it's $10. So you can get a $10 glucose meter. Just check your glucose. Start there. That's the number one. Start there. Um, so it directly correlates to your weight. Um, and if you just do that alone, you manage your blood sugar levels and start to lower them, you'll start to lose weight. Um, so ways you could do that is um, eating less often in the day, not, not snacking throughout the day every two hours. Um, you want to eat uh, more in the eating window. So if you, go to, if you stop eating at 7 o'clock at night um, and don't snack at night and wake up and, you know, get moving at 9 o'clock in the morning, that's a 14-hour fast. That's beautiful, and you have breakfast at 9. Um, or some, some of my patients take it a little longer than that. So there's a lot of variation in this. So this is really just touching on the tip of the iceberg of this topic. Um, but eat less often. It's not about eating less. It's about eating less often. That's the trick. So don't eat less. Eat less often. So just have an eating window. You know, like I'm going to eat from 9 o'clock. Make a rule. 9 o'clock to 7 p.m. That's it. That's the only time I'm going to allow myself to eat. Just do that. Start with there. So start by measuring your blood sugar, creating an eating window, um, eating within that eating window. Not so much eating less. It's not about eating less. Um, and don't eat or drink after dinner. So realize... Everything you eat and drink raises your blood sugar or your insulin levels. So I always, another thing I usually tell people to do is count how many times in the day you eat. And every time you walk past the bowl of grapes and you take a couple, it's healthy, right? It's a grape. But no, every single time you eat something, could be almonds. I'm talking healthy food. I'm not talking junk food. I'm talking healthy food. Or I have junk food. Any food. Anytime you put something in your mouth, and it could be a sweet drink, it could be a Starbucks coffee, Anytime you do that, you're raising your insulin levels, and that will raise your blood sugar. So you've got to be really careful about this. So I just say a couple of first first level steps is count how many times a day you eat. Some people eat 27 to 30 times a day. They don't even realize they're doing that. Number two, test your blood sugar, blood glucose levels. Make sure they're under 100. And number three, create an eating window. So that's three tips right there that you can do. You can start tomorrow. You can start maybe today, um, but definitely tomorrow, no doubt. Um, and start by doing that. For, just do it for 30 days consistently and see changes in your body. Not only changes in the scale, but changes in your body. Um, you know, clothes will fit better. You'll lose inches. Um, and I'll, I'll do more videos like this. I think once a week I'm going to try to do a weight loss type video. Once a week we're going to do a case study or a blood marker. So Jessica and I are trying to figure that out. But I'm going to bring you at least three videos per week. Um, we're revamping our website. The videos are going to be edited now. So it's going to be a much more professional look once we get that underway. We're in the process now of, of getting that done. So definitely subscribe to this channel. Um, I just love to talk. I'm going to bring all the information. I'm going to be doing a talk one time a month. Um, so we're always, always 
and I have information out on that also. And I'm, I'm here to teach you and here for you to learn true physiology. It's not opinion. It's not, it's not an, a, a, you know, opinion or protocol or anything like that. That's how it happens in this office. This office is about true health, where it comes from, how the body works and the physiology behind it. So, um, I hope that helped. Um, the biggest thing I'm just going to say real quick is stop consuming sugar. So read those labels also. That's our, our fourth tip that you can follow. Stop consuming sugar. Um, so try that in 30 days. Um, let me know how you're doing. If you need help, reach out for sure. Um, definitely like and share this video and there'll be more coming. Um, and just reach out if you need any help at all. Okay, I hope you're having a great day today.